Hey guys, welcome to Zero to Fight Stick. This is a tutorial video series about how to take, well, pretty much all of this and turn it into something like this. Your very own custom fight stick. Now let me give you a little history about myself. I've been playing games since, oh gosh, I was knee-high to a Pac-Man machine, which really dates me. And I've been playing fighting games since Street Fighter 2. The original, yes, World Warrior. So that's been a while. Uh, one of my favorites is Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat 2. I'm a scrub. I make no bones about it. So I've decided I, I need a weapon, really, that will work with about everything. Uh, PC, P PlayStation, you, Xbox, you name it. So I've decided I'm going to use these guys and all this stuff to put together a really monster fight stick. And I want to cover just some of the things you're going to need if you want to follow along or you know maybe you decide to modify an existing stick maybe you go with another manufacturer here or there that's fine a lot of these videos should apply to you too so feel free to watch whatever tutorial videos are most relevant to you and hopefully you learn something and it helps you get unstuck from somewhere great and uh, hope you have fun I'm gonna start by showing you what tools you'll need in a minute. Okay, welcome back. Let's talk about what tools you're going to need. First and foremost, hey, basic screwdriver. And this is a standard PH2 Phillips bit that's going to be used with some feet here, like so. He's a little guy. Um, there's a few other applications for it, but also what you'll want to have definitely is a mini screwdriver set right here. This is a pretty standard toolkit from iFixit. Uh, you can use whichever one's your favorite. What you're going to need though are the H2 and hex 2 and the H2.5, at least for opening this case, and maybe some of the other pH0 uh, Phillips head screwdrivers for smaller screws. This is definitely a must. But you probably already have some of that. Now, in this project, I'm doing some wiring using quick disconnects and also JSTPH, also what they call DuPont connectors. I know that's not really the name, but we'll go with that for now. And this is a kind of a basic crimper off of Amazon. Came with one of my sets of consumables. You'll see that later. Um, this guy handles 0.5, 1, and 1.5 millimeters. We really are interested in the 0.5 and 1 on this. Now for the doing some of the smaller wires, you're going to need a smaller crimper. And that might look like this. I'm going to unlock it. There we go. So this bad boy goes a little bit smaller. You want something that can handle about a quarter of a millimeter uh, for the smaller p uh, pins and connectors. Now, you don't have to get into that. These are some of them. I want to trick this stick out, to be honest. I want a turbo button. I want to custom wire things. It's just my nature to overcomplicate everything. So there you go that. If you can get a crimper that does those sizes I mentioned, uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 1, you're pretty well off. Let's talk about what else you need as far as tools. Here's a simple heat gun, tac knife. Uh, you can get whatever. If you have a heat gun uh, for doing heat shrink tubing. Hey, great, you can use that. Uh, if you need to get one, they're pretty cheap on Amazon. This is kind of optional, but we will use it a few times in the process as a basic multimeter. Find these wherever you like. Um, what we're really interested in is this continuity testing. We'll cover that later. I'm just doing some basics. Another thing you'll want, because I'm going to be doing some cord sleeving, I'll show you that in a while later, is a little blowtorch or you can have a hot knife. Now I, I kind of find this guy works pretty well. All you do is fill it up with a little butane, pop the lid, and fire. 
Definitely don't put this around your kids, of course, but we'll need that for doing some of the sleeving later to keep it from becoming a frayed mess. Okay, a little few other odds and ends. We're almost there with tools. Uh, you want a wire stripper and cutter. This is handy. A pair of scissors also is useful there and for other things. Um, there is a point in my project where I do do a little bit of sawing and a little bit of dremeling. I'm not picturing a Dremel here in this video right now. However, this guy, it's old as the hills now, but like me, but it does have a metal file you can use to make some switches fit. So good to have. Uh, if you have a Dremel tool, that should do the job as well. Uh, this is another, this is a little Letterman guy. It's a Squirt ES4. If you only need to do a little bit of stripping, this can do it. Uh, oh, the old soldering iron. Actually, probably won't be using this too much until some of maybe the later bonus episodes, and I'll talk about that much later. Um, I'm trying to avoid soldering because I'm not good at it. I am terrible. If there's soldering involved, I think it's a level 10 difficulty project because no matter how many videos I watch, it just never works for me. Maybe it's just me. Another thing that can help is, especially when you're my age, you need something to magnify those little small connectors to make sure they're going in. A uh, helping hand can help. There's an extra spare wire or two, no big deal. And so if you need to solder things together, just put those wires in together, blah, blah, blah. You can see that on other videos, of course. There are a few other tools that may come up. We'll talk about them when they arrive. Uh, but I just wanted to introduce you to some of the major tools. But now we'll talk about some of the consumables. Just give me a sec. Let's talk about a few of your consumable items that are just kind of quality of life improvements. Uh, zip strips. You might want to pick a color. I've just got a collection of all sorts of different colors. Seems like I've got a lot of greens. Uh, personally, my favorites are white and black, or <laughs> red and black. Sorry. Uh, since we mentioned the soldering iron, we might need a little solder. But again, I'm going to avoid solder as much as possible. This is double-sided tape. We'll use that a few times. Electrical tape. Come on, focus. Electrical tape, you know, it's always useful. If you have a few colors, if you don't have a lot of wire, uh, you can use, you know, just put a little tape on each end to identify which wire it is in different colors. Or use a marker, whichever. Are you going to want some wire? Now, I make use of a lot of wiring harnesses, but making some wire is going to be part of this, and we'll show you when. I'm going to be using 24 gauge wire for that, AWG. Um, not in right now, but this ribbon cable will substitute. There, there you go. All right, another thing are these adhesive stick-on clips. These are for organizing wire. Really nice. Uh, and you know, a little super glue helps too. So there's a few just generic consumables. Let's talk about some generic joystick parts you need. Okay, let's talk about joystick parts you're going to want. First and foremost, we kind of need the brains. I'm starting with the retro board. I do, I am going to dual mod with the Universal Fight board, so we have compatible compatibility with so many systems. It's ridiculous. Yeah, let's try that again. Okay. All right, let's start them off with joystick parts and what you need there. First of all, you need kind of your brains of the operation or as it's commonly called, the PCB. The PCB is just really printed circuit board. I'm going with the retro board as my primary and with a universal fight board. These are both by Brook uh, as a add-on. So those two connect to each other with a mod kit sold by Arcade Shock. That said, we're gonna need some buttons and they come in both 30 millimeter and 24 millimeters flavor. The 30 millimeter are action buttons. We'll talk about that more in depth later, as well as what these option buttons are for. But you can kind of guess from the name, these are your main push buttons, make punches happen, to don't push these during a tournament or you're in trouble usually, the start, select, that sort of thing. Easy peasy. 
Now, I'm using the gamer fingers and I like color, so here's really colorful button tops. We'll be putting those on later. As well as, since these are these do take Cherry MX compatible switches, I'm using some Cherry MX compatible switches to put in them. And we'll again get in depth about those. Uh, we need a joystick. And it's still packaged here, but this is the Paradise Magenta. It is, uh, it's actually an analog joystick, but it translates it into digital, so it's really cool. And we'll be getting to what it can do later, but there's already tons of videos about that. And I probably explain it a lot better than I will. So there's that, and I've got a few add-ons for that as well. Again, I overcomplicate everything. Now we also have a few little bonus features. This is a USB Nutric pass-through. We're gonna actually use three, one for the UFB, or if I want to do firmware updates and don't want to take it out and plug in and that sort of thing. I just like to make my life easier while overcomplicating things. It's a paradox, I know. And there's a here's a nice little gasket to kind of hold that in and color code it. We also have, for our joystick, a nice bicolor bat top and a bicolor ball top. So, you know, whatever I'm feeling that day. I'm probably going to be playing with a bat top, to be honest, because that's what I grew up on. Also, we have wiring harnesses. Like I said, I hate soldering. I, I suck at it, I'm terrible at it, but I can make wires, um, I can plug in wires. So we're gonna be using this and we're gonna be making it a little prettier. So let's talk about uh, some other things we'll need and then we'll wrap this up. All right, let's talk about just some other odds and ends that we're gonna use. I'll go into depth more about what each project requires in their respective episodes. But let's start off, this is a JST-PH kit, probably around $12 on Amazon. Uh, includes pins for up to 24 gauge wire, which is what we're gonna be using, and a bunch of connectors, male and female. We really only need a few of these, like one five pin and one four pin. Uh, so it's overkill, yes, but at least I can make some other things with it later. Uh, there are some great crimping videos out there. I'll be doing what I can um, kind of show that off, but uh, probably better, <laughs> I'm just saying. So there's that. Next up, this I feel is essential, is a nice heat shrinking ki uh, tubing kit. And this has glue inside it. It's not really necessary. It does add a little to the price, but it's black and red, which are my favorite. So uh, there you go. Mostly gonna be using this larger size for some of the cables and maybe a few of these. So that's all the sizes you need for the most part. All right, this is a quick disconnect kit. So we'll be using that with the crimper and wire as well as also has some nice uh, plastic covers to use on them. So we'll be using some of the male spade connectors as well as some of the female connectors there. I'm not really using the bullet connectors right now. Uh, to make some adapter wires and other good stuff. Again, you can keep it pretty simple. Just wire your buttons with a harness. Just wire some other buttons and joystick with a harness. However, like I said, I like to make things complicated and add in other little features and stuff. Uh, this is a what they call a DuPont connector kit. It's not really DuPont, I know. However, it includes some pins you can crimp on and the box style connectors. If you've worked with PCs like I have, you've seen these guys all the time. Maybe you've made them, maybe you've destroyed them, I don't know. Uh, a few other things. This is some of the secret sauce. Uh, I'm gonna show you a lot about sleeving your wires. I did that in my previous fight stick. If you saw the blue one showed, I showed as a demo. Now this is red and black. Again, my favorite colors theme, so there was that. Of course, I used blue and black in that one just to fit the theme. There you go. Um, but it makes your wires look a lot cleaner. It's nice. This guy is a sacrificial Sanwa 24 millimeter button. It's pretty generic. We're not going to use anything but the body. We're going to take the plunger out. We're going to take the switch out. And you'll see why later. Because we have switches. Now, a lot of people use those Nutrit connectors on the AFS and just buy a switch mounting kit with a standard switch. I have to be obstinate and do things my way. I wanted them on the side with three holes on each side just for balance. 
because I'm strange. And this is a SCI 24 millimeter switch. That's This is off on, that's it. We're gonna be using this for tournament lockout as well as switching between the retro board and the UFB board. Now it does have an LED. I don't believe they'll light up, but we'll see. Um, there's also going to be, what you'll want is a three-way uh, DPST switch, on, off, on. And that'll be used for our middle switch, which is what we're going to put in here. I'll explain more later during that episode. Um, but you want one of those just to switch between those different settings. All right, this guy. I wanted to make status LEDs, and there's not really a good setup for that. So I bought some of these guys. They come 25 in a pack. I'm going to be putting some in the blue stick later. Um, you plug an E10 spec bulb in here, LED. They'll last forever. Uh, we're going to be using 3.3 volt bulbs, and we'll see more of these guys later on. Uh, one last thing I'm just going to mention is, thanks to fine folks at my local library, they have a nice 3D printing setup, so I got a mounting board for the UFB. If you notice, the case, which we'll show later, only has uh, one PCB mounting. So if you want to mount your other one, you kind of have to do those adhesive standoffs, and I'm not a fan. So I got this made. We're going to use some double-sided tape and really stick it down in there, and I think it'll be a little bit nicer than just those sticky PCB feet. Okay, so you're seeing just some of the stuff we're going to need for this project. I hope you aren't panicking about having to get stuff. What you might want to do is just if you know something seems like oh I don't want to make wire or I don't want to you know solder I don't want to do this. Hey, don't panic. You may not need that feature. I wanted to go all out, and if you want to go all out, hey, follow these videos and hopefully it'll help you get there. Thanks. Let's look forward to our next episode, which is we're going to be unwrapping the stick or I'm sorry, unswapping the case, and show you some of the basics of the case, like, you know, the PCB mounting, the, you know, what's the difference between a 24 millimeter option button and a 30 millimeter action button, uh, where the stick's going to mount, and uh, other assorted goodies. And so I hope you join me then. I know this is the most production value you've ever seen in a stick building or YouTube video ever, but hey, this is where I'm at. Thanks. See you in the next episode.